National Championship game is underway. Clark, oh my, welcome to the National Championship game. Jasmine Carson, my goodness, is wizardry. Alexis Morris trying to take LSU to the finish line. And Angel Reese knows a ring is coming. LSU captured its very first National Championship. Well, that was the story last year. Here was the scene today, 5-10 Eastern, as Iowa headed to their bus, hoping for a different result. We welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Angel Reese in LSU looking to head back to the Final Four. Meanwhile, Caitlin Clark hoping this is not her final game at Iowa. Kim Mulkey, Lisa Bluter, great respect for what each has done through their long histories in this game. Both a deep appreciation for this moment in women's basketball. As we take a look at our championship bracket, we know South Carolina, NC State, they're in the Final Four. To join them tonight, will it be Iowa or LSU? And later, it's USC against UConn. As we welcome you courtside, hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. We are so happy to be with you tonight for this epic matchup between LSU and Iowa. You can already feel the energy in this building. These are the two most high-scoring offenses in the nation, Rebecca, we know with Iowa, not just their offense, but their entire team runs on the superstar that is Caitlin Clark. The most exciting player in college basketball takes the floor once again tonight. She leads the nation in scoring once again at just under 32 points a game. She steps into logo threes with ease. Such an unselfish teammate. Leads the nation in assists as well at just under nine per game. Will this be her last? We'll see. The numbers historic for Clark, leading the nation in points and assists. Meanwhile, Angel Reese has put together another terrific season. Angel Reese has been dominant on the interior all season throughout her entire career. This season, she's averaging 19 points, 13 boards a game. She's an absolute menace on the offensive glass at five and a half offensive boards per game. She gets it done on the defensive end as well, and certainly the emotional and vocal leader of this LSU team. And for Reese, nine straight double-doubles in tournament games. To further set the stage, we send things over to another Hall of Famer, Holly Rowe. Well, part of the intrigue of tonight's matchup is the fierce competitive nature of the women who are involved and how that manifests itself on the basketball court. It garnered a lot of conversation last year, whether it was Caitlin Clark in the Elite Eight or Angel Reese in last year's championship game. And it did spark a lot of conversation, but Angel Reese made it clear this week she and Caitlin Clark do not hate each other. They actually supported each other from afar. Angel sent out a great tweet. When Caitlin broke the all-time scoring record, and Caitlin has said, I think Angel is great. They are just so fiery that when they step between the lines, there's no friends. Two unapologetically fiery young women facing off both for something big on the line. All right, Ali, we are looking forward to seeing it take place tonight in Albany as we take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Capital One for LSU. Haley Van Litt, the Louisville transfer. Flaugé Johnson having a terrific tournament. Michaela Williams, the SEC Freshman of the Year. Anissa Morrow and Angel Reese. And for Iowa, Caitlin Clark joined by Kate Martin and Gabby Marshall. They have spent so many years together. And then Sydney Afolter and the sophomore Hannah Stolke. Stolke and Reese to jump it up. A trip to the Final Four on the line. The rematch is underway in Albany. Here's Williams firing right away. Can't hit the three, and Stolke the rebound. One of the most important things for Iowa in this game is to be able to secure defensive boards. LSU, an outstanding offensive rebounding team. Clark connects. <laughs> 62nd career three made 
in NCAA tournament play for Clark, passing Diana Taurasi most all time, as that's knocked out of bounds, stays here with LSU. The on-ball screen comes from Stokey. Haley Van Lith, who has the defensive assignment tonight on Clark, goes behind the screen. You can never go behind the screen when it's Caitlin Clark. And here you see Iowa setting up in a 2-3 zone. When Angel Reese got the ball, she was surrounded by help. Iowa will have to send help to the bigs. Here's Williams, the talented freshman, whips it across. Morrow's jumper. No, Reese on the offensive glass. And it's going to stay here, a foul on Stolke. And an early personal on Hannah Stolke. That's going to be, as you talked about, Rebecca, so key for Iowa. LSU, the best offensive rebounding team in the country. Yeah, the, uh, the arms were hooked, and the officials always have their eye on that. That shot partially blocked as Iowa comes away with it. Here is Clark, eyes up. Clark will fire. Back iron. And Johnson comes down with a rebound for LSU. What a rebound by Flage Johnson. Here's Van Lith. Will take the mid-range and knock it down. Kim Mulkey told us Haley Van Lith is going to be given opportunities to take shots tonight. They need her to feel confident in her mid-range. And I think Iowa is okay giving up the mid-range. Here's Clark driving in for two. Caitlin Clark is at her best when she can balance her three-point prowess with attacks to the rim. Here's Morrow putting it on the deck. Lost it out of bounds. And it's deflected, lasted by Iowa. We saw this a lot in the Sweet 16 a game against Colorado. Caitlin Clark turning the corner and finishing an easy one at the rim. And Lisa Bluter felt like LSU may put more of its attention on the others around Clark. And there might be real opportunities for Clark to score in this game. And now that's exactly what Iowa may need in order to win it. As Marshall comes up with a steal. Find Stolke who will lay it in. And that's why it's so important for Hannah Stolke to stay out of foul trouble and stay on the floor for Iowa. She is an outstanding rim runner. Morrow so good in the post. The DePaul transfer has averaged over 21 points in her collegiate career. That's third most amongst active players. Clark back door, Martin, easy two. Last tier, Poa getting ready to check in for LSU as Johnson can't hit the three. A fault of the rebound. Here comes Clark with pace. Oh, what a feed. Clark to Martin, and Martin just couldn't finish it. The emphasis in LSU's practice this morning defensively is we have to keep Clark from penetrating. And, and a travel there on Williams. And they said we also have to keep Hannah Stolke from rim running. We've seen both of those things happen for Iowa. Now here's... We we'll take a look at that pass from Marshall, who had called off Clark, found Stolke instead. Here's an interesting substitution for LSU. As last year, Poa comes into the game for Haley Van Litt. It was Poa who drew two offensive fouls on Clark in last year's national championship game. She has more size and length. Clark, you bet! Could you have possibly asked for a better start if you're Iowa? Johnson dumps it in. Morrow lays it home. Kim Mulkey was telling her squad this morning on offense. When we're Here's Clark dishing out. When they're going against the zone, she still wants their post players to get touches. They dump it into O'Grady, spelling Stolke back to Clark. Clark bounces off, Martin fires, and hits! <laughs> Iowa three for four from deep in the early going. They lead the nation, average over 11 threes per game. LSU usually does not travel by way of the three. Reese surrounded, good find, Williams, and yes, she does get the roll. Huge three there for the freshman Williams. A folder running the other way, lays it in. Clark again with the get-ahead pass, and Kim Mulkey trying to call a timeout as Marshall nearly comes up with a steal. And Kim Mulkey says, please give me that timeout.
It is raining threes in Albany. Care of Iowa. Caitlin Clark stepping into one. Kate Martin, the grad student, hitting hers as well. Are you ready to meet your demise? Man, we really need to upgrade your trash talk. 100 innovative companies, one ETF. Before investing carefully, read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. That's what makes women's basketball so fun is, you know, you have great competition, and that's what we've had all year long. Me and Caitlin Clark don't hate each other. I want everybody to understand that it's just a super competitive game. My competitive passion is just all about the game and what fires me up and what fires my team up. Kaylin Clark is who she is. She's amazing players. Me and Angel have always been great competitors. I know we're growing women's basketball and you like it or you don't. Well, these two women have so often been asked about one another and they're both so aware of this moment for women's basketball tonight as we take a look at today's need to know brought to you by dick sporting goods last year's national championship game 187 combined points both teams shot over 50 percent a record 9.9 .9 million viewers angel told us today hey i'm excited to see if we can top 10. so don't you go letting angel down now <laughs> here is reese Surrounded, finds Poa, her three is good. That is huge for LSU, just the ninth three of the year for Poa. Clark, not that time, rebound secured by Morrow. Angel Reese is a very good passer out of the post. You're gonna get better looks if you get her touches. Williams can't finish, Reese does. Angel Reese, a prolific offensive rebounder. Clark has scored or assisted on 15 of 17 Iowa points. Here is Marshall, a deep three. She got it. Gabby Marshall, perhaps more than any player on the Iowa team, can be streaky. And when she sees her early shots go in, it can be huge for her. A key that Lisa Bluter has pointed out to us multiple times. Last game, Marshall was four of five from three. Comes with a double here. Johnson to the corner, Williams three is good. Now LSU starting to stroke it from deep. Mikhail Williams was, has been a very good three-point shooter all season for LSU, particularly early in the year. Clark back door, Martin feeds Stokey, center of the lane, a Folters three, she got it. How about the shooting in this opening quarter? Incredible. Iowa now five of seven from three. Poa lobbing it in beautifully to Morrow for the finish. Reese and Morrow so good as a tandem on the interior. Early in this game, LSU was settling for too many outside looks without getting their bigs touches. It has changed since the timeout. Clark stops, takes, can't hit. Reese the rebound. Already four rebounds, two assists for Angel Reese. Williams lets it fly. That one's off. Reese left alone, lays it in. It is really hard at times to box out when you are in a zone. And that time, Stokey was boxing out Morrow, but no one had a body on Reese. 23-21, Iowa in front. 3.30 to go in the first quarter. Clark looking to turn the corner, lays it in, plus the foul. Caitlin Clark has started this game beautifully in terms of her balance, getting threes from the perimeter and then opportunities for threes in the paint. CAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Outstanding start to this game. Iowa four-point lead as we send things over to Holly Rowe.
Well, Iowa got out to an early start. LSU called that timeout. It was 17 to 9, and Angel Reese was very strong in her communication. Stop taking dumb shots. She did not like the shot selection. Since that timeout and that emotional outburst, she got what she wanted. Those teammates went to the post players. Anissa Morrow, Angels got four points. Very clear communication from their leader that they listened to, and they have responded. And not just about the post players being able to touch the ball to score. They've made the right decisions to pass back out. Clark completes the three-point play. 11 points, three assists in this first for Caitlin Clark. Meanwhile, LSU, after starting two for seven, is seven for its last nine from the floor. They dump it into Reese. Reese bodies inside. Easy finish for Angel Reese. Iowa might need to send a double before the catch happens because that's just too easy for Angel Reese. Here's Clark. Clark, a little too tricky. Fortunate. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Sydney Folter as Morrow sold the contact. Morrow did a really good job here of selling this because as the drive comes, gets there. And <laughs> Mulkey about to throw out her back. Or rip the back of her jacket. <laughs> Johnson dumps it down. Reese again. Reese can't finish. Here comes Fearbach. Fearbach picks up her dribble but gets it to Clark. Van Liff has not come back in since replaced by Poez. Williams trying to save it, but was out of bounds. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. I know we all have this date together tonight. Remember, we have another one Friday on ESPN. And then Sunday on ABC. South Carolina, undefeated South Carolina, waits to play NC State. The winner of Iowa LSU will play the winner of USC UConn, which follows this game here on ESPN. Clark trying to get it in, does to Stolke. Clark telling Stolke, back it out, she does. Here's Clark. Racing, taking, can't hit, long rebound, flagged down by Morrow. Clark two for five from three. Here's Reese, couldn't get it to her, denied initially by Martin. Morrow's jumper, no, and Iowa will live with that shot. Martin running the floor, stops, lays, can't hit, and the rebound ends up with LSU, here is Reese, Clark back there, and Reese lays it in. Angel Reese having a tremendous opening quarter. Eight points, five rebounds, and two assists for Reese. She has the last six Iowa points. And now Reese comes up with a steal. Reese all the way in to give LSU the lead. A soft telegraphed pass from Clark, and Reese went to work as Poa gets called for her second personal. Angel Reese just getting it done on both ends of the floor, defensively jumps the route, gets out, able to get an easy two in transition. And what I love is she challenges her teammates in a timeout to get her more touches. And then when she does, she has certainly lived up to it. Clark goes back door to the corner. Marshall, back iron, no. Morrow just towers over a falter and then travels. And it will stay with Iowa. That's one of the things Lisa Bluter mentioned. She said, our post players have to box out because we cannot out jump LSU. Have to have good position. She also said we can't turn the ball over because those are possessions and we know they may win the possession battle with rebounds. Clark trying to get it in. And that's going to be a five second violation as Iowa does indeed turn it over. LSU spent a lot of time working on defending Iowa inbounds at their shoot around earlier today. 
Here's Van Lith back in after Poa picked up her second. Van Lith has been under the weather. Johnson along two is good. Flage Johnson having a massive tournament. Clark looking to respond. Backs away and throws it away. Reese on another steal. Reese leaves it. Williams finishes. Somebody needs to come help Kate Martin with the basketball. And now Gabby Marshall looks back. A 10-0 LSU run. Clark turned it over just two times in the Sweet 16 as three turnovers over the last few possessions here. Slight difference game and shot clock. Clark goes right around Van Lith. It ends up with Martin, her three, short. Williams the rebound, and that will do it for the first. Kim Mulkey fired up. Holly Rowe chats with her. In a moment, after a hot start from Iowa, Angel Reese and LSU respond. Angel Reese just getting it done on both ends, fueling LSU in transition where they excel. Stevens dribbles up the court. He stops for the championship! Nice shot, Marcus. Sweet. Turn simulation off. Tisk tisk, not so fast. What? Why? Did you forget, Marcus? Forget what? Your chem exam. Ah. Flashcard time. The atomic weight of boron. The future isn't scary. Not investing in it is. is 100 innovative companies, Hydration. one ETF. Before investing, carefully read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. LSU ends the first quarter of this Elite Eight matchup on a 10-0 run. Moments ago, Holly Rowe caught up with Kim Mulkey. Well, Coach, you called an early timeout, and you got on your team about the defense, particularly the backdoor cuts. How have you changed defensively here to get some turnovers? We started the same way last year when we played them. They jumped on us. We didn't get back Holly in transition defense. As you can see, we can score with them. But somebody's got to play a little defense tonight, and I thought we got better after the timeout. We've seen Angel read plays, get steals. How would you describe her basketball IQ and her ability to change this well, game? Angel, in a big body, has guard skills. She's got quick hands. She wants to bring it up a lot of times. But Angel can score down there at will. Thank you so much, You're Coach. Welcome. Well, let's take a look at fueling the run brought to you by Wendy's. What a first quarter from Angel Reese. It was a nearly flawless 10 minutes for Angel Reese. She is an outstanding offensive rebounder there. She's got a clear lane right to the bucket. Great hands, ability to finish inside. She had 10 points in that quarter, a couple steals as well. I mean, what a great start for the senior. For a little more on Angel, here is Holly. Well, Angel Reese has shown to be an elite winner no matter where she's gone. When she was at St. Francis Academy in Baltimore as a high school player, four-time conference champion, two-time conference champion in volleyball, and a national championship last year. Everywhere she goes, she impacts winning. And she's told us herself, I don't care what else happens in the game. I just want to win. But I'll tell you what, 10 points, five rebounds, three assists, two steals. She's impacting everything right now. Thank you, Holly, as Clark forces up a three, cannot hit it, and another rebound from Reese, her sixth. Solid defense by Haley Van Lith on Clark on that possession. Van Lith faced off against Clark in the Elite Eight last year as a member of Louisville, but did not have the defensive assignment. Her three is good. Iowa in a man-to-man -man for the first time on that possession, and Clark gets caught on the screen. An eight-point LSU lead. Clark through traffic, finds a falter. She hits a big one for the Hawkeyes. Meanwhile, A.J. Edinger getting minutes for Iowa. So Stolke and Adio Grady on the bench. Edinger in for Iowa. Williams mid-range, no. And a falter the rebound for Iowa. 
LSU able to hit some perimeter shots to get Iowa out of the zone, but also so Iowa can rebound and box out better. Clark dumps it. Hediger gets denied. A full-fisted rejection from Angel Reese. Angel Reese has made an impact in a big way on the defensive end. We've seen a couple of steals in there. She helps and then comes over, gets the swat. She is having an incredible night thus far. Defensively, offensively, on the glass. Here's a falter, needs help, tried to force it to Stolke, it wasn't there. A falter back after it, and the possession arrow belongs with LSU. Hey, catch an NBA Wednesday doubleheader on ESPN. Coverage begins at 7 with countdown, and then 7.30 Eastern, Thunder Celtics. Cavs Suns follows that. NBA Wednesday at 7.30 and 10 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Van Lind, Williams, Reese, Johnson, and Morrow, the five for LSU. LSU plays seven, that's it. Williams gets inside, but traveled before she finished. And Michaela Williams with her third turnover. And in the, in the man to man, I was going to be challenged to stay in a stance and stay between their quicker offensive player in the basket. Clark getting off the ball here. Clark trying to come back to it. Clark shakes Van Lith into the lane, gets fouled by Reese. And then Angel Reese takes a tumble afterwards. As Caitlin Clark is going to go to the line mm. to shoot two, and oh no, oh no. Oh my goodness. Keep in mind, Angel Reese hurt her ankle in the SEC tournament. And you just hope that this is not going to affect Angel Reese and LSU tonight. Clark misses the first free throw. So there was the foul from Reese with the body down low and then it's afterwards when she stumbles and hurts the ankle as Clark goes one for two at the line. Now we see Aaliyah Del Rosario come into the game for LSU. She played incredibly well in the Sweet 16. Brings uh, great size and strength on the interior. Playing against size of UCLA in that matchup. Here's Morrow. Morrow traveled. And you can see Kim Mulkey saying we got to stop turning the ball over and that is not what anybody wants to see Angel Reese going back although it looks like she's getting on, she's the, bike. Get on the bike all right. Here's Clark bounces Stolke can't finish. A good setup from Clark and Stolke unable to cash in. Van Lith out to Williams as LSU awaits the return of Reese. Here's Williams shimmying taking can't hit Stolke the rebound. An opportunity for Iowa. Clark knocked out of bounds by Del Rosario. No, they'll say it last hit Iowa. And Caitlin Clark has made far too many careless passes in this first half. And it's not going to be an over the top pass there to Stokey just because Del Rosario has great size. She is 6'6. Six, six. Bounce it to her? Yeah. Or fake it <laughs> and go the other way. <laughs> you have three turnovers from Clark as well as a five second violation. Started the game red hot. Johnson, a play on. Johnson evades, dishes, Morrow can't finish. Nice and breakdown from Flage Johnson. And no offensive rebound for LSU since Angel Reese left the game. Iowa has started getting stops, but they've had more trouble scoring. Stolke can't finish, but gets the foul. Del Rosario whistle for it, and now Angel Reese is going to hobble to the scorer's table and check back in for her team. One of the things Angel Reese talked to us about the other day, Rebecca, she said, you know, last year 
we were able to play so free and easily. No one expected anything from us. This year, it's been a harder path because we all have felt the expectations as the defending champs and obviously as a team that gets a whole lot of attention as well. Two-point game. Six straight points from Iowa. Here's Reese looking to go to work on Stolke. Reese flips it up and in. She is unstoppable tonight. Such a difference for LSU offensively in their quarter court offense when Angel Reese has been on the floor in those few possessions when she wasn't. LSU a plus 10 in the paint. Clark gets it off to Stolke. Stolke wheels inside and finishes over Reese. Stolke a couple of free throws, a layup. Does that start to unlock her? Reese given space, will take, can't hit. Rebound and a foul on Johnson going over the back. That'll be number one on Flage Johnson. Angel Reese at 6-3, just great patience. Sees three different defenders coming at her, keeps it simple. Just goes over her left shoulder, finished with the right hand. You have to have patience when you know a double or triple is coming. Here's Stolke, center of the lane, draws two, throws it to the corner of Falter, can't hit. And Williams the rebound for the Tigers. Morrow looking to take Martin. A Falter comes with a perfectly timed double, knocked out of bounds, stays here. Well, Sydney A Falter, Lisa Bluter calls Chicago tough plays with a chip on her shoulder and she's done such a nice job since entering the starting lineup for the injured Molly Davis. Williams. Over to Johnson. Johnson takes and hits. Flaugé Johnson has been spectacular the entire postseason. It's been a little bit of a slower start here early in this game than we saw in the Sweet 16 matchup. Iowa started 10 for 14. They're 2 for 10 since. Here's Stolke looking to take Reese. Stolke gets denied by Reese. Williams thought about taking. Dumps it down. Reese surrounded. Reese unable to finish. Rebound knocked around and a falter flags it down for Iowa. In the backcourt, Martin gets it ahead. Iowa with numbers. Here's Clark. Catch, fire, and hit. Van Lith can't answer. Long rebound, Williams. Another chance here. Van Lith will fire again. No. And a little frustration from Flage Johnson at the shot. Here's Clark in a crowd. Finds Marshall. Back iron, no. Williams the rebound. LSU pushing pace now. Three on two. Williams to Van Lith. Van Lith misses. Williams. Can't hit either. This look a little pace. exhausted at this, this pace. pace. Yes. Clark. No. LSU should smartly walk the ball up the floor. This has been frenetic. Players a little bit tired right now. And Lisa Bluter had told us she was surprised when she went into synergy to learn LSU actually plays at a faster pace than Iowa. Reese, deep catch, draws three, and a foul. And Angel Reese will shoot two. That's going to be number two on Stolke. The stars have certainly come to play today. Angel Reese has been virtually unstoppable on the inside. And who's looking good on the outside? No surprise. Caitlin Clark. Sweet, turn simulation off. Tisk, tisk, Marcus. Did you forget? Forget what?
your chem exam? Ah. 100 innovative companies, one ETF. Before investing carefully, read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. Coming up at the half, your Dove Halftime Report with Chanae, Andrea, and myself. Oh, Duncan, my nerves are so bad. It feels like the theme of this game early on is any three of you can shoot, I can shoot better. better, better, better. <laughs> well, LSU has to because Iowa's played every second of this half in the zone, and that's what you use to bust it. Yeah, and what has Iowa done? Anytime LSU has gambled, anytime LSU has reached, or when LSU is staying in that front court and trying to get the ball in turnover, they kick the ball ahead and they make you pay. LSU has to balance defense dictating, but also playing discipline because Iowa's going to make them pay. All right, we will make you pay by sticking around. We'll see you at the half. For now, we're going to get back to Albany with Ryan Rucco and Rebecca Lobo. All right, team, looking forward to hearing from you three at the half. Right now, we get a chance to hear from Holly Rowe. Listening into Iowa's huddle in that last timeout, Lisa Bluter said, we have got to draw some fouls. How do we do that? Well, Caitlin Clark piped right up and said, we can't be afraid of them, guys. We've got to go right at them, jump stop, get into their body and ball fake. They don't feel like they're getting to the line enough, and they don't feel like they're being aggressive enough based on what I heard in the huddle. One of the hard things when Angel Reese is the stopper that you're trying to draw fouls from is she does a really good job of not taking head fakes. She does not leave her feet quickly to allow you to get into her body and draw that foul. So Stolke checks out after her second personal. She had picked up her first early, so was able to navigate for a while as Reese misses the free throw. Here's today's star stories brought to you by Honda. We know many of you came for these two young women. They have both delivered. Clark and Reese with huge first halves. And just like the national championship game, the play on the court has delivered. This has been a high level basketball game. Just sensational. Huh? The ball is wet. Yeah, it's a little wet. I got to dry it off. Now it's good to go. Three minutes to go in this first half. And oh, I think it's still wet. How did it get wet? Kim Mulkey wants to know. When Caitlin dribbles it, she says, ooh, I don't want that in my hand. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> Here we go. Clark looking to evade Van Lith. Van Lith has hung nicely in this second quarter after struggling in the first. Clark around the screen. Directing traffic. Clark into the lane, throws it off. Reese out of bounds. And seven to shoot. The right idea. Kayla Clark was trying to wrap it around Reese and deliver it to, Edid or to O'Grady. So it's Marshall, a falter, Martin, O'Grady, and Clark for Iowa as Martin comes back in for the Hawkeyes. Iowa's going to have to be deliberate on their screens. They had a hard time getting it in the last time on the under out of bounds. Here's a falter on the drive. A falter lays it in, and this game is tied as Marshall nearly comes up with a steal. Second time she's got her hand on an inbounds pass tonight. And then she fouls Flaugé Johnson on the other end and helps her right up. Caitlin Clark tells her teammates to attack and try to get to the rim and draw fouls. No foul drawn, but certainly getting to the rim by a falter. Well, we saw a falter, that big go-ahead bucket in the final minutes of that second round win against West Virginia, not afraid to take it to the hoop. Deflected into the arms of Reese. Reese will take, can't hit. What a rebound. Morrow goes over. Martin leaves it short. And that is not over the back. She nope. is able to jump and reach without causing a foul. Here's Martin. Into O'Grady. Bounce to Marshall. Out to a falter. Here's Clark. Fires it in. O'Grady a deep catch. Can't pop it home. Under two minutes to go in this first half. Here's Van Lith driving it inside and gets the whistle against Clark, who picks up her first. Ailey Van Lith insisting the contact. Great decision by Haley Van Lith to attack. Try to get this foul called. Yikes. I'll say, I think 
this game has been very, very well officiated. Yes. I don't necessarily agree that that was a foul. And Van Lith rattles in the first free throw. Not all contact is a foul. Yep. Can have marginal contact. If it doesn't make a big impact, then it is not a foul. If it's marginal contact that does impact the play significantly, then it is a foul. Correct, Professor. Here's a falter gathering inside, could not get it to go. A falter knocks it away, but Morrow collects for LSU. In the corner, wide open, Williams, no, and O'Grady the rebound. Clark running. Clark eyes up behind the back, through the lane, lays it in. <laughs> 17 points from Caitlin Clark. Game tied at 41. Morrow wants it, takes it. No, O'Grady is fouled by who? By Reese, and that is gonna be number two on Angel Reese. Angel Reese is relentless on the offensive glass. And you could see her saying, get me the ball. And when they have tonight, it has resulted in good things. Here's Clark weaving through traffic. Pizza pies at home. Iowa back in front. LSU has missed its last nine shots. Johnson ends that. And back to what Angel Reese was saying. There's the phrase in basketball, feed the beast. And there's been no better beast for LSU today than Angel Reese. She does need touches when she's on the floor. Tied at 43, 10 second difference game in shot clock. Caitlin Clark saying get away to Addison O'Grady because she wants to wind this down, not give LSU a lot of time. Here's Clark. Clark bounces away, five to shoot, shovels back. O'Grady, sure. Seven seconds left in the half. Johnson on the attack, spinning and finishing. What a move from Flaugé Johnson, and what a half from these young women. Flaugé Johnson has been spectacular at times, including this one, the move, the finish, beautiful basketball. Let's send things over to Holly Rowe. Caitlin, your team got out to such a hot start and then a dip. How did you recollect yourselves in that moment? Yeah, they're really good players. They're going to make tough shots. We got to do a better job on the glass. They got, they're out rebounded us by eight, um, but they're going to make some tough shots. That's how good they are. So I think being able to respond and weather their storms and go down and make our own runs. Everybody's breathing hard. This has been a high pace game. How do you guys have enough in the tank for the second half with this kind of pace? I don't think you need more motivation than a final four on the line. And this is what you work for all year, these moments like this. So you got to play 20 more minutes and we'll be ready for it. Thanks, Caitlin. Thanks. Well, Caitlin Clark, 19 points, five assists. Angel Reese with 13 points, eight rebounds, three assists. We have a tie game at the half. Is it living up to the hype? Oh, baby, is it ever? The Dove Halftime Report. L, Drea, Janae. Speaking of living up to the hype, here's our trio. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. What a first half in Albany, LSU and Iowa. Tied at 45, a trip to the Final Four on the line tonight as we take a look at our championship bracket. Undefeated South Carolina and NC State already have punched their tickets. USC and UConn will play following this game. As we welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. That was pretty fun, huh, that first half? Unbelievable as we take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. How about the stars beginning with Angel Reese? There was no more impactful player on both ends of the floor in that first half than Angel Reese. Here she draws forward as she gets into the paint, able to finish was all over the offensive glass with 3-0 boards in the first 20 minutes getting it done defensively as well two steals two blocks 
What a first half for Angel Reese. And then Caitlin Clark, of course, is going to cause all kinds of problems offensively here. Draws five defenders, gets the paint touch, delivers it outside for a three. And we know she can also walk in and drain them from deep. I thought she had a really good balance of attacking the paint and taking the perimeter shot. Take a look here. What does Caitlin Clark like to do when she goes left? She likes to pull up. What does she like to do when she goes right? Get all the way to the rim. She was able to do both in the first half. Clark with 19 points, five assists. Reese with 13 points, eight rebounds, three assists. Here we go, second half action in Albany. A trip to the final four at stake. Clark. Was trying to redirect a pass. Clark, oh my, from Schenectady. Here's Johnson who gets fouled, and if it's Stolke, it will be her third, and it is number three on Hannah Stolke. Caitlin Clark here, Haley Van Lith right there, but you're never right there when it's Caitlin Clark. The bench is liking the three. We know the stardom of Clark is unlike anything we have seen. The thing that's at the base of the stardom is her intoxicating range. And when you look at her average three-pointer made, it's over 26 feet. The three-point line is just over 22 feet. 56% of her threes are from 25 plus as Johnson hits both free throws. We simply have never seen a player take that many threes from distance and hit them at that kind of a percentage. Here's Martin cutting through the lane, gets blocked but fouled. Flage Johnson gets whistled for the personal, helps up Martin. And free throws here for Martin as we send things over to Holly Rush. Listening into Kim Mulkey's huddle right before the team took the floor, she talked about X's and O's, where they want to defend, but at the very end, she looked right at Angel Reese. Are you okay? Are you okay? How's that ankle? The right angle ankle is sore. Angel did change her shoes at half. I'm assuming there's some extra tape under that right ankle, and then her teammates tried to hype her up. You're a dog, you're a dog, you're fine. You got the summer to get better. They want her to gut it out right now. <laughs> and Angel Reese has not yet said what she is going to do after this year. She could come back to LSU for another season, or she could enter the WNBA draft, and I'm sure there are a lot of WNBA GMs watching tonight hoping for the latter. She did say she would make the decision right after her last game. Yep, she said she'll tell her coach first and then everybody else. Johnson, back iron, no, and O'Grady the rebound. Reese has two fouls. Clark gets it ahead of Folter. Can't lay it in. Great job by Johnson to contest it. Iowa has stayed in this man-to-man -man throughout the course of this third quarter. It was a much more effective. Nice cut from Johnson and fine from Reese. Defense for them in the first half. Here's Martin running the floor and lays it in on the dime from Clark. How about the pace of this game? It has been remarkable up and down, back and forth. Van Lith cuts through, gets stripped, out of bounds. It'll stay with LSU. Hey, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Final Four begins Saturday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on TBS. For more information, go to NCAA.com. We know NC State women and men are in. You could end up with the UConn men and women. Connecticut will play Juju Watkins and USC following this game on ESPN tonight. Van Lith left alone. No, missed it badly, and Martin the rebound. Van Lith now one for four from three. She hit her first attempt. Clark wheels around, evades Van Lith, and drains it. My goodness. We talked about Caitlin Clark doing things no other player has done before. Logo, left, three, like no other. Sweet.
Turn simulation off. Tisk tisk, Marcus. <sighs> Did you forget? Forget what? Your chem exam. Ah. One hundred innovative companies. One ETF. Before investing carefully, read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. Now it is time for Get More, brought to you by Geico. Caitlin Clark dialing it up from deep doesn't just mean this. 27 and a half, just about feet on that jumper, but it's also her get ahead passing and how she sees the floor and can deliver the basketball. And yeah, then it's this again. Haley Van Lith, those were two really good contests, just great shots from Caitlin Clark. Well, one of the things that Haley Van Lith talked to us about earlier today at shoot around was she said, the key to guarding Caitlin is you cannot get emotional about the shot she makes. She's going to make some ridiculous shots. You can't let it take you out of what you're trying to do defensively. We heard uh, Drea Carter talk about that at the half with both Caitlin Clark shots and Angel Reese blocks. Players cannot internalize those and take them personally. Uh, six point Iowa lead. They led by nine early. Then LSU built an eight point lead. Iowa came back to tie it at the half. See the numbers against Mann and D. This game for Iowa. Paul was three, missed it badly, and it's out of bounds to Iowa. So last year, Poa comes in for Van Lith. Now, one more thing on Haley Van Lith. She got an IV because she's been so sick before that UCLA game. That's how sick she was. Clark! She's possessed! An 8-0 run and a whole lot of distance from Caitlin Clark. Reese can't swivel it in. Johnson, what an offensive rebound from Flaugé Johnson. Good things happen when Angel Reese touches the ball inside, draws so much attention. Clark finds O'Grady. O'Grady gets smothered by Johnson. Here comes Flaugé Johnson, who has the last 10 LSU points. Williams, mid-range, no. Reese, the tip won't go. Long rebound. Who's going to get to it? It's Johnson for LSU. Johnson giving it up. Reese wants a touch. Gets one. Morrow in the mid-range. Uh-uh. And Martin the rebound as Clark slows her team down. Clark, 6 of 11 from 3. Clark will fire. No. Long rebound in the corner. Saved by Moro to Poa. And here come the Tigers. They dump it down for Reese. Reese bodies in. Denied by O'Grady. Goes back at it. And a foul on the second attempt before the bucket will put Reese at the line. The distance, the distance, the distance on these Caitlin Clark threes. It's just ridiculous. You can see Clark starting to emote a little more, feeling it in this third quarter. Has hit three threes already in the frame. Reese makes the second. Angel Reese at 73 and a half percent from the line this year. Here's Clark racing inside behind the back to O'Grady. Martin looking to shed last tier Poa. A falter. The crossover gets it to O'Grady. Out to Marshall. Marshall gets fouled by Williams. Her first. Really nice. Just a little head and shoulder fake by Gabby Marshall. Gets Williams to bite. Gets inside and the foul drawn as well. Winner of this game will play the winner of USC UConn in the Final Four. That game follows this on ESPN. A falter. Can't lay it in. Good contest for Morrow. An opportunity for LSU here. Johnson. Looking to shake Martin. Johnson can't lay it in. And the rebound to Iowa. Here's Johnson, and she fouls Clark as Clark lays it in. But the foul was long before that. 
There are so many players on the floor here tonight that are simply delightful to watch. Flaugé Johnson, certainly one of them. And that is a big third foul on Flaugé, who has had a tremendous tournament, is so effervescent. Kim Mulkey talks about her as just a joyful person and the energy that her team gets from the joy that Johnson plays with who is also a recording artist for Rock Nation. That's deflected and stays here. Nice hands from Angel Reese. That's an interesting, by the way. Yeah. Flaugé truly can do it all. But right now on the bench with three fouls. Here's Clark shaking free and a foul here against Poa. And that is going to be Poa's third. So you have three on Poa, three on Johnson. When you're trying to fight through all the screens to chase Caitlin Clark, it just puts players in tough positions defensively where they can foul. Here's Martin. Clark, again coming off the screens. Clark steps back, fires. You bet! Her seventh three of the game. Reese trying to save it and does. Poa, no. Rebound, Martin. Clark from the logo. No. Caitlin Clark passes Taylor Robertson. Most career threes in Division I history. Reese can't lay it in. Morrow, no. Another chance. Won't go. Smart, Caitlin Clark tipping it out, knowing she can't corral it herself. Clark was wide open, Fierbach didn't see her. And then a kick ball. This is sensational. There are times when you just can't avoid talking about length. Pan in her face drains it anyway. There are stars still to come tonight. Juju Watkins at USC about to take on Paige Beckers and UConn. That is up next here on ESPN. What a freshman season for this star who scored 30 in a win against Baylor to advance to the Elite Eight. And Paige Beckers, yeah, she's fully back, averaging 28 points per game in this tournament, reminding everybody the star that she is. Meanwhile, Iowa with the basketball, leading by nine. Clark has been electric in this quarter. What a pass, and Martin trying to save it. Van Liff has it for LSU. Here's Van Liff racing down the floor, and it's out of bounds as Clark got a hand on. And I know it's tough because Flaugé Johnson has three fouls, but I just wonder if at some point LSU is going to put her defensively on Caitlin Clark. All season long, she has been the player who has taken the best and the toughest perimeter defensive yeah. assignment. Meanwhile, Reese started 6 of 8, is 0 of 7 since. Remember, she also injured her ankle. Here's Clark. Will she pull up? Finding a falter who lays it in. Good decision there from Clark. The lead is 11 for Iowa. Game was tied at the half. Reese going to work, can't finish, gets fouled, and Angel Reese is going to go to the line. Caitlin Clark just manipulates everyone as she comes down the floor. No, she doesn't want to attack the shot blocker. Hesitation and delivers the basketball. You talk about her assists a lot, Rebecca. Ben Lober has done an unbelievable job tracking this all season and feeding us this information. Just how many assists come in transition for Caitlin? Ben on the Iowa staff, their video guy, and he just keeps track of this, and it's it's just incredible to get ahead passer that she is. Reese misses both, a falter right on cue, gets denied. Flaugé Johnson jumping out of the gym for that rejection. And then immediately turns, gathers her team, is the voice in the huddle. This young woman is only a sophomore. Elite athlete, elite basketball player. An elite leader as a sophomore. Here's Clark. 
Johnson on her now. Clark looking to shake Johnson. Clark into the lane. Lefty finish won't go. Sets up Martin. Too strong. And the rebound, Michaela Williams for LSU. Tigers have missed 13 of their last 14 shots. Williams can't hit. Good box out for Martin. And it's off the foot of Morrow, out of bounds to Iowa. It looked like Martin took a shot, maybe to the ear. Kate Martin about as tough as they come. Lisa Bluter calls her the glue to this Iowa team, playing in her 161st career game at Iowa. No doubt destined to be a coach whenever her playing days are done. There's quite a few Iowa fans here in Albany. Quite a few LSU fans as well. Electric atmosphere. Martin on the drive, the spin, the floater is good. Smart, attack the player with three fouls. Just a smart play. 13 point lead for Iowa, their largest of the game. They're on a 15-3 run. And Van Lith throws it away. Angel Reese needs a touch inside, Ryan. Angel Reese needs a touch inside. Last tier Poa will check back in for Van Lith. You see Angel Reese, last made field goal, 621 mark of the second quarter. Dealt with the ankle after that. Also just has not got the same consistency of touches as the officials are going to go to the monitor. The previous play is under review for an unobserved. Well, they're going to take a look and see if there was an unobserved act on the previous play. Well, let's observe it. <laughs> it won't be unobserved much longer. <laughs> So this was that play, I mean, there's nothing that would rise to the level of an intentional foul there. No. And for those who are maybe joining us tonight who aren't normally with us and we understand there's a, a broader audience this evening, intentional foul is the language used in the women's college game, not flagrant foul. And you cannot go back and call that a common foul. Lisa Mattingly officiated 18 Final Fours is with us. Lisa, is there anything here that you would deem worthy of raising to the level of an intentional foul? Absolutely not. I think we should have had a foul a hit on the arm by number 24 in purple, but nothing intentional or unnecessary about that. But of course, you can't go back and call a common. You can only go back and call the intentional, and certainly that is not one. That's correct. Thank you, Lisa. Now, the officials are still discussing it. The contact by number 24 was deemed incidental. It'll be white water bounds. So there you go, Iowa basketball. All right, Rebecca, we have seen LSU go on torrid runs in short periods of time including tonight, what has to happen for them on the offensive end in order to start getting going? Well, it's going to start on the defensive end. If they can get stops and get out in transition, we saw that was what fueled them in the first half when they can get some early looks. But if they get into their quarter court offense, you have to try to get Angel Reese a touch or Anissa Mora when she's in the game a touch. Yeah, there's still plenty of time to methodically work your way back if you're LSU. Caitlin Clark has outscored the Tigers this quarter as Martin gets stripped by Reese, and there you go. There's a stop for LSU. Reese running and finishing right on cue, partner. They are so good when they get in the open floor or get offense from defense. Here's Clark. Will fire away. Missed it short. And a foul going against a falter as LSU comes up with another stop. 
Angel Reese gets a touch on the ball and then beats almost everyone down the floor, shows her hand so her teammate knows where to, where to deliver the pass. You also wonder if that review allowed a little reset moment for LSU in a quarter that has been all Iowa. Very good point. Here's Johnson playing with three fouls. Around the Reese screen, mid-range jumper, too strong. Rebound, Morrow in the putback. She was sandwiched. How did Anissa Morrow come up with that offensive board? So strong on the interior. Martin's three won't go. Opportunity LSU, not a great shot there from Martin. Here's Van Lith across her body. Can't finish it, Reese amongst the trees, no. Another chance, uh-uh, but Johnson, yes. And here comes LSU. Clark to Martin, gets denied, and at last hit her. Flauge Johnson exploding. I know Iowa wants to play with pace, but the last few possessions, beautiful block by Flauge Johnson. The last few possessions, Iowa has played like a team that is down. Quick, quick shots. Holly? Flaugé Johnson has turned herself into an elite basketball player this season through relentless hard work. She has three different workouts a day. She gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning, gets a pre-practice workout, an after-practice workout. This is a young woman who has made herself this kind of a basketball with an unrelenting schedule. None of what you're seeing tonight should surprise you because she's been doing it all season. Oh, what a pass! Clark to O'Grady for the finish. Down the other end, Reese makes the catch. Here's last tier Poa, big three. No, Morrow again, and a foul. And this one is against Anissa Morrow. Best get ahead passer since Suber. You're seeing her in 22 in white, and she just has her eyes up, always leads her player. They never have to stop and wait for the basketball. And on this end, Anissa Mora was just trying to get offensive position, gave a little nudge in the back of the Iowa player. Gets the foul called. And both teams in the bonus. So they will shoot free throws the rest of the way in this third with 44 seconds to go. That's Morrow's first personal. A falter at the line, 84%. Knocks down the first. You know, a huge defensive play a couple possessions ago by Caitlin Clark with the initial knock away and then eventually the steal before that gorgeous pass at a time where LSU was building momentum. Yeah, they have to have really active hands. A falter hits both. Kate Martin back in. Stolke, now this is interesting. Stolke will check in. She has sat most of this quarter with three fouls. Checking in on the defensive end. I'd go right at her, especially since she's guarding Angel Reese, because you want to get Angel Reese the basketball. Reese battling with Stolke. Van Lid throws it away. Yeah, Kim Mulkey frustrated by a couple of these passes from Haley Van Lith. The transfer from Louisville was the number one transfer in the portal after last season. Went to a Final Four a couple of seasons ago with Jeff Wall's Louisville team. The falter and Stokey back on the bench now. Five second difference, game and shot clock. As Iowa will try and wind this down and leave limited time for LSU, if any. Clark waits. Five second difference, game and shot clock. Clark, five to shoot. Clark through the lane, can't lay it in. Reese the rebound, five seconds left. Johnson with time. Johnson evades, waits, hoist, can't hit. And that'll do it for the third. Iowa outscores LSU by 11 in the frame. Fourth quarter coming up next. We'll chat with Lisa Bluter. Sweet. Turn simulation off. Tisk, tisk, Marcus. <sighs> Did you forget? Forget what? Your chem exam? Ugh. 100 innovative companies, one ETF. Before investing carefully, read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com.
The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Start of the fourth quarter in Albany, Iowa, an 11 point lead. Moments ago, Holly caught up with Lisa Bluter. Coach Bluter, LSU went on a run late in that third quarter. Why and how do you fix it? Well, for one thing, we took a few bad shots, had a few too many that turned into easy ones for them. But I mean, we, we've got to box out. I mean, they're just getting easy one after easy one. It's really the main way they're scoring right now, getting those paint offensive rebounds. It's hard to box out when you're one foot away from the basket, though. Caitlin Clark, we've seen a lot of great performances from her. How would you describe what you're seeing from her right now, Coach? You know, she came out this third quarter, and she just, I mean, she just, the shots are amazing, right? We want her to also take a little time now. Now clock management has to come into play here with an 11-point lead into the fourth quarter as well. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. All right, Holly, thank you very much. Let's check out our most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity. Ryan, you remember Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. Well, the first three here, long three, even longer three. We like things in three, even longer three. And what's the one thing that's not like the other? The long get ahead pass, just getting her thing done here in this game is Caitlin Clark. Caitlin told us the other day that she felt the weight of the world on her shoulders in those games in Iowa City and hoped that getting to Albany, like going to Seattle last season, would free her and her team up just to play more loosely that happened against Colorado, feels like it's happened tonight as well. She looks like a player who enjoys having the weight of the world <laughs> on her shoulders. <laughs> Start of the fourth quarter, LSU trailing by 11. Here's Reese inside battling with O'Grady. Instead, it's gonna be Williams in the corner. She got it. What a huge start to the fourth as the freshman drills her third three of the night. Clark. Thought about taking, gets it back from O'Grady. Van Lith on Clark, Clark around her, feeds O'Grady, mid-range, won't go. O'Grady goes around Reese for the foul, and that will be the second personal on O'Grady. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. LSU shot just five for 26 in that third, but they start the fourth with a made three. And now a touch for Reese. Reese trying to find an angle, finds Morrow. Morrow will lay it in. What a start to the fourth for the Tigers. Anisa Morrow is terrific, catching at the high post area, driving to the basket, especially when she can go right. Clark dishes, O'Grady gets fouled, and that will be number three on Angel Reese. Anissa Morrow is such a great compliment to Angel Reese because Angel draws so much attention on the block and then can pass it back out and Morrow quick, strong, good finisher inside. Well, you talk about the way Reese can pass and we see that whether it's passing out of the post or big to big. I had a WNBA coach text me this week talking about how she marvels at the basketball IQ of Reese and we asked her about that today and she said, you have to remember most of my life I was a point guard. Up through eighth and ninth grade, I was a point guard, and then coming out of high school, I was a wing. So I always see my teammates and know where on the floor they operate best. I'll tell you what, I'm always really impressed with the player who can put her contact lens back in without the saline solution. <laughs> oh, Grady hits the second after missing the first. We can't mess up that vision. No, no. O'Grady has been very good tonight in her minutes. Gets a breather. Stolke back in, playing with three fouls. Reese working inside. Can't flip it in. Clark the rebound. Here comes Clark. Eyes up. Wheels it back. Now Martin looking to attack. Martin lays it in with the left hand. 
the last time down for LSU. I liked Angel Reese on the same side of the floor as Michaela Williams. You cannot help off of Michaela Williams. Oh, nice pass. Williams into Morrow. Yeah, great direct entry right into Anissa Morrow. Same thing. You cannot help off of Michaela Williams. Morrow with 12 points, 12 rebounds, playing in her first Elite Eight game. Clark again. <laughs> Her eighth three of the night. <laughs> what is Haley Van Lith supposed to do? She goes over the screen, lunges at Caitlin Clark. Any other player in the country would say, great defense, we want her taking that shot. Well, Caitlin Clark set the record for most career assists in the NCAA tournament with that pass to Kate Martin as Van Lith gets fouled, passing to Mika Johnson. Van Lith will go to the line. We send things over to Holly. Well, talking to Caitlin Clark, she says she just never gets nervous. It's just crazy that she's able to perform like she is. We asked her how she slept last night. She's like, I slept great. She said the only problem today has been sitting around all day waiting for this game to get here. She just has this calm demeanor. She has admitted that at times this year, the pressure to perform has gotten to her. A lot of people driving to see her, buying tickets. She does want to perform well, but she does not get nervous. Right, there's that delineation between feeling the pressure, but not being nervous. Well, tonight she scored 34 thus far, nine assists as well. Van Liff hits two big free throws. Eight point Iowa lead. Clark. Curling inside, in traffic, last hit Stolke. Good hands from Reese and not the right decision from Clark. Exactly, Clark could have definitely jump stopped right there and put a little floater up on the rim. And that might be the move that gets developed more at the next level for Clark. Here's Falaje Johnson, lost the handle, Martin, and gets fouled by Morrow. Number two on Morrow, and a big turnover there from LSU. And there's been a couple of turnovers. Oh, it's Kate Martin's going to give us some glitter that was on the floor. Just glad it wasn't gum. Yeah. Have you ever been handed a piece of glitter mid-game before? <laughs> or confetti, I should say? <laughs> no. Well, you just were. Oh, yeah, at the answers, yes. <laughs> Here's Clark, another deep one. No, short, Martin soars in, wins it, Stolke backs it out, Iowa another chance here. Clark racing around, throws it off a foot, it stays with Iowa. Off a foot, but not off a falter. Oh, nicely done. You saw the difference in offensive rebounding there, LSU with 18 O boards in this game. Clark finds Martin, Martin digs in and lays it home. Tenth assist for Clark. Martin with 15 points. Morrow won't go. Rebound, Clark. Here comes Iowa. Clark will take it out. Maybe run a little more time. Now finds Martin. Oh, my, what a rejection from Angel Reese. Caitlin Clark, you see her eyes where she wants to feed the ball. Martin right there. Flage Johnson can only do so much because she has three fouls. And then Angel Reese impactful again on the defensive end. Here's Marshall. Iowa going to let some more time wind. Clark sizing up Van Lith. Will drive it. Stops over Reese. Can't bank it in. Wanted a foul, didn't get it. LSU with numbers now. Blaget Johnson on the bench for the moment for the Tigers. Get the ball to Michaela Williams. She's the best direct entry passer. And takes the three. Can't hit, was on line and caught back iron. Martin left alone. Back iron, no, and it will tilt out of bounds to LSU. You can see Lisa Bluter maybe a little frustrated with the early shot, but Martin was so open. Yeah. And, and we've seen it multiple times on the offensive end for LSU. Simple, simplicity. Get Michaela Williams a touch on the side, direct entry into one of your posts, and let them go to work. 
Reese one for 12 after starting six of eight. Remember, injured her ankle after that. What a pass. There you go. Poa feeding Morrow. Morrow now with 14 points. Clark behind the back, nearly lost the handle, digs in, can't finish, gets it back, and slings it out. And a kick here. Last here, Poa on the left side of the floor. Just a beautiful bounce pass, but you see the spin on it? That's what makes Morrow be able to catch it easily and finish. Eight point Iowa lead. Here's Clark. Clark pulls up another deep one. He's good! She's simply ridiculous. And a steal on this end. A falter comes away with it. And now, will there be a held ball? There will. Possession arrow belongs with Iowa. Clark, nine threes. 37 points under five minutes away from the final four. Caitlin Clark once again dancing with the basketball, seeing it go through the net. Amelia, turn off the alarm. Amelia, weather? 70 degrees and sunny today. Amelia, unlock the door. I'm afraid I can't do that, Jen. Why not? Did you forget something? My protein shake. The future isn't scary. Not investing in it is. You're so dramatic, Amelia. Bye, Jen. 100 innovative companies, one ETF. Before investing carefully, read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. Juju Watkins against Paige Beckers. Doing whatever it is to win. I think that's priority always. This is the Juju Watkins show. You come to UConn to win national championships, that's the main goal. Oh, Becker's heat check. To have stars in these games makes people tune in. UConn versus USC, it'll be a great game, a great battle. Well, let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ because our stars have shown out. You saw the ones who are coming up next. Reese got this game off to an incredible start for LSU, and then Caitlin Clark has been sensational throughout her seventh 30 point game in her NCAA tournament history, most in the last 25 years. Angel Reese, her 10th consecutive NCAA tournament double double, tied for the most in the last 25 years. A really, really well played basketball game so far on both ends, and so much has been made and hyped about sort of the bad blood that might exist between these players. There's been terrific sportsmanship on both sides during this game tonight. Here's Martin. Martin trying to get it back to Clark and does. Now Flange Johnson finally on Caitlin Clark. Clark? They're switching everything now with Clark. Here's a falter. Five to shoot. Out to Martin. Martin leaning and hitting. That's a huge shot from Kate Martin after Iowa used the entire shot clock. And we will see if LSU continues to do what they just did, switch on every ball screen that involves Caitlin Clark. Here's Johnson into traffic. She is such a tough finisher. Just fluid, she's fluid. 18 for Flange Johnson, who has shot it around 60% from the floor in the tournament. Yes, I like this. I like Flage Johnson as the primary on Caitlin Clark. Size, length. Took a long time for LSU to make that adjustment. Here's Clark backing away from Johnson. Oh, my. She can't hit. Flag down, but out of bounds was a falter. And it's going to be LSU ball. Caitlin Clark wanted a foul, but there wasn't a foul there. And it's worth repeating. We said it early in the game. This has been an outstanding performance by the officials. Got her a little bit on the hand there. Nothing down low. Here's Johnson, 320 to go. What a steal. Gabby Marshall gets fouled, and that'll be number four on Flage Johnson. 
And we, Marshall took a shot. We've seen Gabby Marshall have huge moments at the end of big games blocking shots. She is pint size and she is blo blocking shots. Here she's able to jump and elevate and get this steal and then the foul. Look at that, just great job. Goes up and snatches the basketball and all unlucky for Flaugé Johnson. Was that foul on her? Confirming whether it was on Johnson or Williams, it was on Johnson, her fourth. Here's Clark. Clark gonna drive it through the lane, and she traveled. And you could see, now she may have wanted to run more clock in this instance, but that's the part of her game that still is gonna come along, stopping and taking that little floater. Van Lip dumps it down, Morrow finds Reese. Can't finish it, rebound, Reese gets fouled. And Angel Reese is going back to the line with 2.50 to go in the fourth. Her second jump is ridiculous, Angel Reese. And it's one of the things that makes her such an elite offensive rebounder. She doesn't get it the first time, she can quickly bounce back up off the floor and get it the second. That is number four on Hannah Stolke as Reese misses the first. She is two for seven from the line tonight. Big time box outs here for Iowa. Reese just under 74% on the season. Got the second. 2.50 to go, Iowa leads by 10. 37 points, 10 assists, seven rebounds from Caitlin Clark. Trying to take Iowa across the finish line and to the final four. Here's Stolke, back to Clark. Stolke lays it in, plus the foul. Jason Sudeikis all smiles. A 12-point Iowa lead. Simple but beautiful basketball. Pass, get it back, pass again. Stolke misses the free throw. That was number four on Reese. So four on Johnson, four on Reese. Van Lith can't hit. Not a great look. Haley Van Lith, two for eight from the floor. Crowd starting to sense it here for Iowa. Clark has tied an NCAA tournament record with nine made threes today. Going for number 10. Can't get it to drop. Reese the rebound, still time for LSU. Here's Williams plunging into the paint and squeezing it in. And now LSU will take a timeout. They have just one remaining. And we know Kim Mulkey, she will, even if she doesn't have many timeouts to play with, will still take them after made buckets in these situations. Well, you would expect here that they will apply some full core pressure to try to either cause a turnover or speed Iowa up a little bit, because Iowa's done a terrific job, whether making or missing shots, of utilizing the clock, understanding time and score. Well, Caitlin Clark has been incredible tonight. I mean, she came out from the jump of this game looking ready to play, and she was making threes early, passing to teammates early. I mean, her stat line is ridiculous. She has 37 right now on 13 of 29 for the floor. Double-double with 11 assists. Sadek is into it. So is Academy Award-winning director Ezra Edelman. <laughs> <laughs> Sadek is enjoying the extracurriculars. You know, we asked Caitlin Clark the other day. You see her tying the tournament record. We asked her, what is she most proud of this season? And she said, the thing I'm most proud of is the joy I've still been able to play with while feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. Holly referenced it earlier. As the season has gone along and the crowds have continued to grow and the attention has as well, she feels that pressure to perform on a nightly basis and yet she continually delivers and has again tonight. Here is that pressure from LSU. Martin 
Looked like she got fouled. No call. Nearly turns it over, and now they do. Poa comes up with a steal. Here is Reese. Reese leans in, and that's a charge. And number five on Angel Reese. Does Martin own that real estate before the foul? I don't know that she does, Rye. That is a tough fifth foul on Angel Reese, who walks off for perhaps the final time in her collegiate career. She has said she will make her decision after her final game whether to go into the WNBA as a lottery pick or come back another season. She's still hoping for a comeback in this game. Iowa leading by 10 and in trouble here. Clark has to get it across, finds Martin, who waits, now lays it in. Van Litz three, won't go. Marshall the rebound. It's getting late for LSU and a foul on Stolke at half court. And that is number five. Whoa, did, that did is last, a costly foul. Did last year Poa step in and take that charge? Because she's elite at that in the quarter court, but to do it at midcourt? Oh, she didn't even step in. Oh, yes, she did. Hannah Stolke's not even looking. That's just unlucky right there. She's running down the floor, but Poa sees it and establishes herself. Savvy play from Poa, and door back open for the moment for LSU. Still a lot of work to be done. Down 12, 120 to go. Coming up next, USC UConn. Poa dumps it in. Johnson into the lane, curls it up and off. Rebound O'Grady. Martin has it. Martin in trouble, has it knocked away by Poa, and then Martin is fouled by Van Liff. Iowa in the bonus, so free throws here for Kate Martin. Reese's night is done. The question is, is her season, as you see the smile start to creep onto the face of Caitlin Clark. Martin hits both. The lead is 14, largest of the night for Iowa. Williams spins and gets a whistle against Marshall. And Michaela Williams will go to the line to shoot two. It's ideal for LSU. You get to the free throw line. You want to make both free throws, but it also allows you to more easily set up that full court pressure that has been a little bit problematic for Iowa. Well, Kim Mulkey and Lisa Bluter both talked at length about the meaning of this game to the sport of women's basketball, something they've spent their lifetime in as players and now coaches. They both said their only regret was this meeting happening now and not later in the tournament. One of these teams goes home tonight. The other heads to Cleveland. Iowa on the brink. Caitlin's family enjoying the emotion. We welcome you back courtside here. Ryan Rucco, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. This game has been sensational. Both teams came out of the gates hitting shots. 
the third quarter, Caitlin Clark really made sure to put her stamp on this game, and Iowa has not looked back. I mean, she has been spectacular once again. Her teammates have been great in their support, but both of the stars, Caitlin Clark and Angel DeLuise, once again have delivered in one of the game's biggest moments in terms of the number of eyeballs on the sport. The game, the players, the action has delivered. 17 points, 20 rebounds tonight for Angel Reese, who is fouled out. Here is a falter, fouled by Michaela Williams. A 12-point Iowa lead with 58.4 seconds to go in the fourth. It's been so interesting sitting down with Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark and the appreciation they have for this game, for this stage. And they both have also talked about the players who came before them and saying, yes, this has now taken off and taken this seismic leap. But if it wasn't for the generations who have worked so hard to establish women's basketball, we wouldn't have been in position to land at these meteoric heights. Williams hits the three, and now LSU will take its final timeout. LSU falls 30 seconds. Angel Reese had a torrid start to this game, struggled after the ankle injury. Still was able to board it. Meanwhile, Caitlin Clark, 37 points, seven rebounds, 12 assists, tied an NCAA tournament record with nine made threes, set the all-time record for most threes made in a Division I career, also set the NCAA tournament record for most total assists. It's the combination of the two things that have made her the best offensive player that I've seen in the last 30 years is her ability to hit those threes, but also to involve her teammates, space the floor because of her range, and then find open players in the perfect moments. Now, Iowa takes a timeout following that LSU timeout. And as you can see on her little score bug there, they have a lot of timeouts to work with should they need them. And the reason Iowa took the timeout was so that they could advance the basketball. You cannot advance the basketball on the opponent's timeout. Well, you may have just caught a glimpse of Jan Jensen, the outstanding longtime assistant for Iowa, losing a heel in the huddle, and they're all still laughing about it. I think Jim Fee stepped on her toe, and off went the heel. <laughs> of the shoe, fortunately not her heel. Iowa <laughs> is no Cinderella, but they are on the brink of still dancing. So much attention around this rematch after the emotion of last season. LSU's national championship win over Iowa as Clark is fouled and goes back to the line. 41.9 to go in this fourth. Big smile from Brent and Ann, Caitlin's brothers here as well, though she told us they've been reaching out to me and I've told them, just go find something to do in Albany. I'm staying in my room and just waiting for the game. And by the way, good luck finding something to do in Albany. <laughs> Clark hits both, 39 for Caitlin Clark. Here's Van Lip, Poa's three, and wow, Poa nails the three and is fouled by Clark, who immediately says, my fault. Not a wise foul there from Caitlin Clark, and Poa a chance for four. It was on the hand at the end of it. Great job by Poa to keep her concentration, finish, and then Caitlin, my bad. I think everybody knew it was her bad. Yeah. Poa trying to complete the four-point play. Does not. Rebound loose, and it's out of bounds to LSU. Still a little work to be done here with 33.8 to go. No surprise. This is an LSU team that continues to fight. 
Here's Van Lith. They need it. They don't have it. Morrow can't finish. Johnson does with 26 seconds to go. It's an eight-point game. And Lisa Bluter will take a timeout, a five-point possession there for LSU. Caitlin Clark in the second half has drained six threes. Let's show you five of them. I don't know what the sixth one did wrong to not make the edit, but look at these. She's got a defender in her face the entire time. Different defenders as well, and then just steps to the side, usually the left, and drains it time and time again. Well, a lot of records have fallen here tonight, courtesy of Caitlin Clark, became the career Division I three-point makes leader, became the career tournament three-point field goal leader, and the career tournament assist leader. Iowa inbounds the basketball here. They put some better free throw shooters in the game as well. Taylor McCabe in. Here is Clark, and Clark is fouled, and she will have a chance for a 40-point night. LSU, though, has done a really good job of fouling quickly, not letting Iowa take too much time off the clock. It was in the Elite Eight last year where Caitlin Clark had a 41-point triple-double. She has a 40-point game tonight. 40 points, 12 assists, 7 rebounds. 13th career 40-point game for the all-time leading scorer in Division I history. Johnson launches, can't hit, rebound Morrow, gets blocked. Underneath, a falter is fouled, and now it is all cosmetic. Caitlin Clark told us this is not a revenge game. I don't have any animosity towards LSU. They are just the team standing in our way to go back to the Final Four. In 14 seconds, they won't be standing in their way any longer. Free throw off, rebound Johnson, up the floor. Her three is good with 7.9 seconds to go, and now Iowa will take its final timeout. Iowa calls full timeout. Reminder, USC UConn coming up next. Juju Watkins against Paige Beckers. The winner of that game will play the winner of this one. Iowa a seven point lead with 7.9 to go. Remember this game was tied at 45 at the half. And then Iowa outscored LSU by 11 in the third. Hasn't exactly been a sprint to the finish. <laughs> the in finish this is, final minute. Is, everything else felt like a sprint. Yeah, the entire game at breakneck pace. Now we're at a traffic jam. <laughs> Iowa trying to get to the final four for the third time in program history. In a rematch with LSU, Clark evades. That will do it this time. It's Iowa! The Hawkeyes are headed back to the Final Four. Galactic.
Arctic greatness from Caitlin Clark on display yet again. Ninety-four, eighty-seven. the final as Iowa ends LSU season here tonight in Albany behind an unforgettable performance from Caitlin Clark. She and Angel Reese exchange a hug and a whisper. We await to see what Reese will do next. Go pro or stay and Holly is with Caitlin Clark who is headed to Cleveland. Caitlin, it was tied at the half. You came out in the third quarter and hit four threes. What slipped in your mind about the shots you were taking? I think just confidence, being confident in all the work that I put in, um, trusting my teammates. Um, but we really knew it was on the defensive end. We knew we were going to be able to be fine on offense. We've been fine on offense all year. Um, I think it was just getting stops and being physical. They rebounded the ball really well, but we weathered every storm. you got to give them a lot of credit. They had a great year. You wanted to get back to the Final Four. You've talked about it all year. How do you describe this feeling in this moment, Caitlin? This one probably feels a little bit better. It's my senior year with this group. A lot of people counted us out at the beginning of the year with the people we lost, and all we did was work really hard. And to get back here is really hard. This region was loaded with so much talent, and, um, you know, the job's not finished. Go enjoy that confetti. Thanks, Holly. An unforgettable night from Caitlin Clark. 41 points, 12 assists, 7 rebounds for our producer Kelly, Kerry Callahan, our director Jimmy Platt, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowan, our entire crew. I'm Ryan Rucco. We send you to Portland now. Beth Moens and Deb Antonelli.